Hello everyone. Our today's video will be on the poem An Introduction by Komala Das. I am going to read the poem and also I will explain the whole poem line by line. The poem is written in an autobiographical form and the poet in this poem wants to show us the position of Indian woman in a patriarchal society. Uh, she also tries to show us the uh, condition of the woman and how the women are being treated by others. Okay, so let's start reading the poem. In the beginning line of the poem, the poet Komala Dash says that, I don't know uh, politics, but I know the names of those in power and can repeat them like days of week or names of months beginning with Nehru. What the poet actually tries to say here, the poet uh, says that she does not know the politics, yet she is well aware of the politicians of her country uh, from Nehru to the ones of her own times. And uh, as the politics of India has always remained in fewer hands, that is, uh, in the hands of males, she has memorized the names of all the politicians, like the days of week or the names of the month. The lines also depict how the males have been ruling the country without giving this right to the women. Moreover, the rulers are fewer in numbers because democracy exists only in words. In reality, the rule of the country remains in the hands of some people only who have assumed themselves to be the permanent rulers in the next line she says i am indian very brown born in malabar i speak three languages write in two dream in one here the poet comes to describe her own she says that she is an indian and very brown means brown in color she is born in Malabar and she says she can speak three languages, write in two and dream in one. Here she says dream in one means that uh, among the three languages she can write in two or she writes in two. But she only dreams in the third language because the society does not allow her to write in that particular language. And obviously, that particular language is English. Don't write in English, they said. English is not your mother tongue. The people of the society here asks Komala Dash uh, not to write in English. Because they said English is not her mother tongue. So she should not write in that particular language. Now, in the next line, Komala Dash expresses her disgust. She says, Why not leave me alone? Critics, friends, visiting cousins, every one of you. Why not let me speak in any language I like? Here Komala Dash uh, mentions those people of the society as uh, critics, friends, visiting cousins and asks them to leave her alone and to allow her to speak in any language she likes. The language I speak becomes mine, its distortions, its queerness, all mine, mine alone. Here, Kamala Dash says that the language in which she writes is her own, along with all its uh, imperfections and strangeness. It is half English, half Indian, funny perhaps, means that the language is not uh, fully English. There are some uh, elements of uh, Indian languages uh, which may sound funny to the other people. But to be honest, it is very much uh, like her own as she is considered to be a woman with some imperfections. It voices my joys, my longings, my hopes and it is useful to me as cawing is to crows or roaring to the lions. It means that the language expresses her joys, grief and hopes. 
it is as useful to her as uh, cawing is to crows and uh, roaring is to lions it also means that the language is an uh, integral part of her expression it is human speech the speech of the mind that is here and not there a mind that sees and hears and is aware not the deep blind speech of trees in storm or of monsoon clouds or of rain or the incoherent mutterings of the blazing funeral pyre the whole lines means that uh, her speech that is english is the speech of humans that minds can understand and not strange and queer like the sound of the trees in the storms or of uh, monsoon clouds or of rain or of uh, the dead people as these all these voices cannot be understood by the people or uh, by the minds i was child and later they told me i grew for i became tall my limbs swelled and one or two places sprouted hair when i asked for love not knowing knowing what else to ask for he drew a youth of 16 into the bedroom and closed the door now the poet komala dash moves towards her married life she was a child although the size of her body grew up that is she entered uh, into the stage of adolescence yet uh, her soul was still immature as she was uh, just a child she asked for love however her husband quenched his own lust on the bed the poet here not only describes her married life but tries to narrate the story of every woman in our country he did not beat me but my sad woman body felt so beaten the weight of my breasts and womb crushed me i shrank pitifully here in these lines uh, she says that uh, she was not beaten by him yet her womanly body felt to be beaten and wounded and thus she got tired of it his uh, genitals seemed to her as some burden that have crushed her she started hating her female body because it is her body that has given her so much pain then I owed a shirt and my brother's trousers cut my hair short and ignored my womanliness here uh, to avoid its uh, load she tried to become a man by adopting the attire of males but it is uh, not led by her in-laws uh, they said in the next line dress in sari be girl be wife they say they started uh, taunting her she was uh, commanded to dress in sarees and be a girl wife uh, they say be embroider be cook be a quarreler with uh, servants fit in or oh, belong cried the categorizers they said her to be a embroider a cook a quarreler with servants etc etc uh, don't sit on walls or peep in through our uh, lace draped windows be emmy or be komala or better still be madhavi kutti it is time to choose a name a role don't play pretending games don't play at uh, schizophrenia or be a nympho don't cry embarrassingly loud when jilted in love uh, she was asked not to hide her real self her in-laws even commanded her to remain silent and endure her unachieved love the lines expose uh, the condition of a woman in the house of her in-laws she is forced to give up her frankness and attain the nature of a uh, daughter-in-law she is forced 
to do everything uh, that her in-laws desire her to do she has to accomplish all the tasks though she is not willing to do so still she is taunted scolded as well as abused she is even advised not to express her grief grief if she is uh, troubled by her uh, married life i met a man loved him call him not by any name he is every man who wants a woman just as i am every woman who seeks love in him the hungry hast of rivers in me the oceans tireless waiting who are you i ask each and every one the answer is it is i anywhere and everywhere i see the one who calls himself i the meaning of these lines is that the poet komala dash meets a man but she does not mention his name according to her he is the every man who desires a woman to quench his lust as a woman desires love from a man when she asks him about his identity the answer is i here this i is the male ego uh, and uh, the next line says in this world he is tightly packed like the sword in its sheath it means that uh, in this patriarchal society all the male people are perfectly fitted just like as uh, the sword fits in its uh, sheath it is i who drink lonely drinks at 12 midnight in hotels of uh, strange towns it is i who love it is i who make love and then feel shame it is i who lie dying with a rattle in my throat uh means that all these lines means that uh first of all the i is the male ego and that ego gives all the male people the liberty or the freedom to do whatever he likes he can drink at midnight he can laugh he can satisfy his uh, lust uh but that ego of i dies when a person dies and thus his end is uh, no different than the end of the woman uh the last uh, couple of lines says that i am sinner i am saint i am the beloved and the betrayed i have no joys that are not yours no aches which are not yours i do call myself i uh, by these lines the poet uh, komala dash wants to say that like every male person she can also attribute the title of i to herself uh, like man she is also sinner and also saint also she is uh, beloved and uh, betrayed her joys and pains are no different than those of men hence she uh, emancipates herself to the level of i so this was the whole poem and uh, the meaning of it okay so this is all for today we'll uh, meet you soon